Hello everyone, this is Anil. Welcome to ServiceNow to IBM Watson XAI uh, Gen AI integration. In this video, I'll talk about what is the setup required to provision a Watson XAI instance from IBM and how we integrate that with ServiceNow. So as part of this, I'll also provide a link to the code, which is uh, a scoped application in ServiceNow and that is available on GitHub. Let's get started. This is a community article which I'll be following as part of this video. The first step is to provision a Watson X instance. So for that, you have to access this URL and complete the registration. And once you complete the registration, you will be taken to a page like this. Uh, it says data platform.cloud.ibm.com and then slash Watson X slash home context Watson X or WX. That will be your uh, home page. Right? So once you complete the registration, once the instance is provisioned, it looks like this. And once that first step is done, the next is to create a API key in uh, Watson X uh, cloud platform. So for that, you go to IBM Cloud IAM. And here, if you open API keys, you can see the different API keys which are available. You can also create one. You click on create and then say my video key. And then you click on create. So once you create it, it will create the API key. Now we have to download that or copy it. Otherwise, uh, the key will not, you cannot uh, copy it in future, right? So which is why as part of the creation itself, you have to store it somewhere for future use. So this is about the key creation. The next step is to uh, create a project in Watson X. So for that, again, you go back to the data platform here, and then you have an option to create projects. If you go here, this is the project I have created. Uh, so, but if you go here, you have an option to create a new project if you want. And once you create that, it looks like this. Now, once you're in the project, then you have the ability to see like what options you have. Uh, you can add collaborators, you can add data you want to work with. So the first easiest step to start would be to experiment with foundation models and build prompts. So you click on that. And then here it gives you like a prompt session, uh, which is a chat interface but you also have structured and free form if you want. Now in chat interface, you can ask a question, it will give you a response back. It also gives you like quick start samples uh, if you don't know where to start. Now the key thing to note here is once you click on this view code, it gives you an option to see what is the, uh, what are, like how do you consume this, uh, or how do you interact with this prompt session through API. So it gives you curl, Node.js, Python options. But essentially, if you look at this, you understand uh, uh, what is the project ID that you have to use and what is the model ID you have to, what you have to use and so on. So what are the parameters you have to pass and what is the construct you have to use to, uh, you know, make the API call. Right? That's the idea of this code section here. And which is very critical uh, if you want to consume this from a third party system like ServiceNow. Now, once you understand this portion of this, uh, data platform, the next step is to uh, do the setup in service now. So again, for that, first we open uh, GitHub where the code is present. Now uh, you can fork this code and you can, uh, uh, you know, use that for your uh, deployment to service now. And then you'll go to service now, you uh, open studio. So here, go to studio. And from Studio, you can import this application. So you have to import from source control. Again, you have to do all the setup required to either SSH or HTTPS uh, method of uh, communicating with uh, GitHub. That's not in scope of this video, but once you have that done, then you should be able to import the application into your environment or into your service instance. So once that is done, the next step is to update system properties. So for that, I'm just going to come back here. Properties. We'll go to system properties. And these are the two properties which we have to update. One of them is called API key. The second one is project ID. As I have mentioned, when we did the uh, key creation here, uh, we already captured that or saved it. That's how you will update uh, this API key. And then as mentioned in the prompt lab, you have a, you can access the project ID, which you will update in this project ID. So once you update these two fields, then we can move on to next 
next step which is to refresh the token so for that we go to what's the next and what's the next AI token so if you open that I already have a token here but you can click on refresh token and save it and it will bring back a new token now in order to see what happens in the background you can look at this flow context so refresh that and you can see that this is the flow that ran in the background to refresh the token that is about the refresh token part and once you refresh that the next step is to actually test the integration the prompt so for that you go to uh, next another uh, page here which is your what's the next AI input message so here I have an example input right so here I'm asking what are your LLM capabilities and how they help clients that's my input and the response text like what does our LLM capabilities are focused on providing clients with cutting edge legal advice and so on so basically this is the response we got from bots and now you can try one more example here so I go back to the list and I'll select new and I'll say uh, describe my sky is blue or you can say explain why sky is blue and save it so once you ask that question then immediately it will change the state to loading and the response text will say Jenna is working on fetching results now we can also check what is happening in the background through the flow context so as you can see here it ran the Watson X AI text generator flow and then now we can see here what is the response just gonna close that uh, close that okay come back here refresh it so I can see that it responded it says the sky appears blue because of phenomenon called Raleigh scattering and so on and so forth so basically this is the response we got from uh, uh, Gen AI right so that's how you uh, create a uh, like input and then you you get a response from Watsonx. And the next step in this video is to see what is the consumption of uh, tokens in Watsonx. So for that, you go to your, uh, again, IBM Watsonx session, uh, data platform, and then you can see that there's a resource usage section, which tells you how many tokens you have consumed. And you can also see that in your uh, response message uh, when you make the rest call right so in summary this is how you do the setup where you start by provisioning a watson x instance you uh, create api key you create a project in watson x then you uh, get the project id uh, and then you integrate service now to watson x through a scoped application called gen AI connector uh, this is how you download from github and then you install it uh, using studio and then after that you make a couple of system property updates then you refresh the token then you test the integration and then you can also check the token usage in watson x uh, thank you for watching this is Anil.